Hey everyone. Okay, so for the most part, this episode has pretty much served as a breather and a means to wind down a little in the aftermath of Dragon Joe's defeat, but even then, one thing I really liked is how the episode still used it as a means of reflection and reconciliation for certain characters, like, in this case, Weiss, and, Weiss Rebecca, and, and Shiki. Like, in Weiss's case, it's pretty much on the nose, just wrapping up his arc and him deciding what path he should take from here, and I like how even though he maintains that he and the professor are still two completely different people, he still acknowledges that maybe there are a few things he could learn from his older counterpart in terms of what is the best way for him to move forward and move forward and how best he should live his life. Again, not much new ground being being broken there, I suppose, but it is still interesting in a sense how despite the journey being vastly different, both both the Weiss we know and the professor we and the professor did still arrive at very similar similar places. And <clears throat> I do also like how it how it does all come back to Sabir and our and our Weiss was in some small way able to reconcile a lot of his regrets, I guess you could say. And yeah, Weiss Weiss aside, we also do get a little moment of reconciliation between Rebecca and Labilia and even though I still do maintain Labilia still pulled her pulling Pulling her usual shit by the end of that conversation, we're in the mood at the moment. I will say, hindsight is an interesting thing, and I do see a lot more indicators of a reveal we would get later in regards to her character. Like, it, it's setting up for that. Uh, and as far as Shiki, like, yeah, a, a lot of a lot of his reconciliation kind of came at the end of this end of this episode, where where, where, where the crew decided to take a return trip to, to well, to pretty much Planet Granbull, and it's where we learn the, it's where Shiki finally learns the dark truth that, yeah, he, it wasn't that they, that they were evil or that they just wanted him to, would abandon him, they left in order for him, he finally learns that what happened is all the robots on Granbull were destined to die. He, and, and they just wanted to make sure he, he, he had a bright future surrounded by people who would be who would be there for him, who would care for him. Like they, they wanted him to, to leave with Rebecca because it was it was the only path towards a, a future he actually had. Whereas whereas if he looked, if he just stayed on Granville, he would have remained alone his entire goddamn life. Like and. I like how th there is a little bit of tragedy in that regard. Like he never would have been able to. He, he as 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 said, he never would have been able to fix any of them. So it's like he, they, they in their own way saved Cheeky from from the despair of loneliness. I guess you could say. Um, but okay, obviously the bigger thing to talk about is is that around the time our heroes make a return trip to Granville. We see another ship similar in design to the Eden Zero, known as the Eden's One, apparently, approach the planet as well with this world's version of Captain Connor aboard. And yeah, this entire back half of the episode really captures that feeling of unease just from the fact that no, no one other than Rebecca knows who that is and really plants the seeds that, oh no, something is really gonna hit the fan again, and the, the, the way the episode lingers on the final moment of Ziggy coming back from the dead, which, yeah, I'm not gonna sugarcoat or beat around the bush about it, Ziggy is back, guys, but it's what he's coming back as that you need to start worrying about, and, 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 you've, and you've all seen the, like, the trailer for this season, you know what's coming, it's just like, and honestly, like, the amount of twists and turns the series takes after this after this point, after the after his revival, after the reveal of what we're gonna get with him going full on evil kind of thing, is honestly kind of intriguing looking back. Cause even now, the ultimate reveal of how why this happened, I'm still not 100% sold on in terms of whether it works or not. But again, just the idea, the concept of Ziggy Sh Shiki's adoptive grandfather going evil, there is a plethora of development for Shiki's character that really does get explored just from him trying to grapple with that reality that the one his biggest enemy the one he's going to have to face is is the one he's only, considered his only family at the time and that that's not even talking about the other reveal with Ziggy himself but I'm just I'm going to table that little existential crisis for later when he, we when the anime covers it uh, on a lighter note though we get the reveal of Noah's identity as director of the Galactic Intelligence Agency which is a big reveal yet funny at the same time when Noah asks for them to keep his secret and then it cuts to Homer covering her mouth like she she knows it's a secret she will struggle with keeping like like 
Tomura is the bladder mouth. No matter how you look at it, she she cannot keep her mouth shut. Uh, on a more, but on a more serious note as well, though, I I reveled in the conversation between Noah and Rebecca about just the timelines, her power, just Mr. Kevin Connor not being part of their not being part of their original timeline, all that stuff. Like it's it's so like just that conversation in itself is so chock full of context clues that that intention that whether intentionally or not really set the stage for Rebecca's origins. Like everything like how how this how this all plays off for Rebecca is honestly still kind of amazing in my opinion. Um but yeah, uh <clears throat> but okay. Cir but circling back to Shiki and the crew on Grand Bowl though, there's even more interesting context brought up by Hermit that yeah, there's a point in history that's completely blank to the star shines. If their memories had been completely erased of something that happened before Ziggy returned to Grand Bell with, with Shiki. And admittedly, this is the, this is around the time where I think I started going absolutely crazy, batshit crazy with the with the theories of what that missing piece wa was. When in reality, honestly, the truth of the truth was staring me right in the face the whole time. It was. Like it, it was, it was one of those things that was kind of obvious in retrospect of what Mushroom was was building up in terms of what those lost memories were about. But I just kept, I just kept overthinking it too much. You could say. Um, with that said, there's not really much more else to talk about other than when then we finally, we finally basically get the get get set up of Ivory starting the process of observing clean, trying to get a read on exactly what's wrong with her and how exactly she can go about restoring the very emotions of a person as she's more or less as more or less that's what she's well, that's what's been lost to her and that raises the question of why this was why it was only her what was it that was so painful so she willingly gave up her emotions and I know I keep hyping it up but this is again a moment where Mashma holds nothing back like it's it's the kind of thing where it shows Mashma can be a real sadistic bastard when he wants to be, and it's what he does with the whole, with the whole, with clean especially, but just with the, with 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 the Rutherford with the Rutherford siblings as a whole, where he gets like he gets really sadistic on on the on what happened to them, which, yeah, although which. Yeah, if you ever want a reminder that this is a still a Hero Mashima series, despite how fucked up it can be at times, then look no further than, fifth, than 1540 on the episode's timestamp, where you get self insert characters that are... It's basically Team Shadow Gear, Levy, Jed, and Dry. And th those are inserts specifically to the anime. They don't really show up on the manga, but yeah, just a little note there. Uh, but uh, yeah, guys, that's pretty much all i got for this review. If you enjoyed the video, like Comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, Analyst, Control, be sure to notification bell, hit the subscribe button, and just share the video around, guys. Dark Knight of Anime, signing off. Later, everyone.